We've been told. I'm constantly being told by left-wing callers to my radio program, yeah. people who email, put on my social media, that, that I fear, right? That's yes. their, I fear brown people. And no matter how many times you tell them that a constitutional republic is built on an idea yes. and that, that a nation must be sovereign in order to maintain itself, that I don't care where the immigrants come from, so long as they're not coming here for a, to be a public charge, so long as they are coming here to become part of the fabric, not change it uh, in a negative way, that, that, that I don't fear the country's growing non-white population, but we're, as conservatives, constantly told what we think. Sure, and if you could picture a bunch of secular leftists from Europe streaming over our border, no one on our side would like that either. It has nothing to do with whiteness, it never has. But if a bunch of people who are skilled, who uh, want to be a part of the American dream, who speak English, uh, but happen to brown skin, want to come and contribute to, and uh, pay taxes and be uh, people who add in addition to what we have as a society, uh, we'd welcome a lot of them. And that's the issue here, but they want to distill it to race. They're going to continue to distill it to race and they're going to make everyone who holds our viewpoint a racist and we'll have to prove that we're not. That's the game plan. You know what's amazing is that for, look, again, this thing with the New York Times and it's a yes. signal flare, right? They're expecting the media to follow their lead here, right? Sure. Dean Beckett did not just say this to the New York Times. He was saying this to the media at large. Right. That you, we're not going to have any shroud of objectivity. We must defeat this president, we must install a Democrat. These these agenda items must be be at the fore. We've been saying this to have sure. to, for and only to have people. You guys are paranoid. Yes. You're jealous. You haven't been invited into the club. You don't go to. You're not part of the cocktail. We're circuit. afraid. And we're afraid. And now they've taken the mask off. And there still aren't people saying, wait a second, are, are you a news organization or do you work for the Democrats? Yeah, and it is a, that the, they see it as their responsibility as a company to foster social justice and change. This is what's happening at the New York Times. It's what's happening in many of our corporations right now. And you see it at the same moment, the New York Times pivoted from Mueller, Mueller, Mueller to racism, racism, racism. The CNN did the exact same thing. And MSNBC. All this, MSNBC is- Washington it, Post. Uh, it, it, it's, and I don't think that there's some sort of conference call where the heads of all these outlets get together and say, well, what's our new move here? The Russian collusion hoax failed. Uh, what, what do we got to do? I think they all got it. They all saw that this was the way that they were going to divide the country and to uh, make other folks like you and me who just want to defend some of the American values. Can we do we even have any that are worth defending? Even that concept in and of itself is branded as at race as racist. And that, that it's not going to stop anytime soon. During the monologue, I pointed out yeah. a poll that NPR conducted that 60 percent of Mexicans wanted to send back the, sure. the the migrants. And then Giamate, who just won in Guatemala, won on strong support for not being a safe third country. Yes. So they don't want the Hondurans and Salvadorans coming in. We pointed out that many of the Latin American countries or South American countries have border walls, but the media is never going to say this is a norm in, in, in Central and South America, that, that, uh, that open borders are not accepted, even poor country, rich country, doesn't matter. They all secure their borders. They want people to come and go uh, legally. This is now just a project of the left to say it's only racist when we do it, and more specifically, it's racist when Trump does it. It doesn't matter if the same policy was sure. in place when Obama was president. It doesn't matter if the photos are four or five years old and they were taken during the Obama years. Anything they can curate and manicure to make this president look terrible in whatever percentage of the vote Voters they have to sway who are not MAGA voters to get that Democrat elected, they're going to do it. Exactly. And if you look at some of our reporting at Breitbart.com, we have something called the Cartel Chronicles. And this is led by Brandon Darby and Ildefonso Ortiz. He does great work. They do amazing work. And what they do is they actually give a voice to a lot of Mexicans who are being oppressed by their government and the cartels. And yet, of course, we're racist because we try to highlight those voices because those voices might want a, a more sane system with immigration to our country. But that said, if you look at some of our reporting, you'll see that there are certain factions in Mexico, for example, the Sinaloa Federation, which is a federation of cartels, who kind of want few, less immigration because their business is drugs. It's, very, it's much easier for them if that's the case, if it's sort of more a check, because there's a lot of media scrutiny when there's too many caravans coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there are other p cartels. The Gulf Cartel comes to mind. Los Zetas comes to mind. They actually want to see the border open because they're running those chains of, of people where they basically go down to Central America as salespeople, get people into some form of slavery. They come up through Mexico. They're housed in warehouses. They're smuggled into the United States. They get 
get jobs and they pay the cartels for years on end. The New York Times has zero interest in this and who the victims are. Uh, we estimate at Breitbart about 80% of the women who get caught up in these, car in these cartel caravans, uh, that they get sexually assaulted along the way. Uh, even the lowest estimates are a third. And our government is subjecting people to that by not closing our border. How, how does the media get away with this level of corruption? What you just laid out, and we did, again, we did some of this in the monologue, that they're saying if this news story, which would yes. be relevant in our world section, right, or the Americas, or whatever section it would fall in the New York Times or the Washington Post or the LA Times, that would be of interest, all the news that's fit to print, we're not gonna print this because we're not gonna, we're not gonna have anything to say, we're not gonna put anything out there that may differ or, or, or veer off from the narrative. And the narrative is this country under Trump is racist. The only way to redeem this country, to make it right and moral is to open the border. The only way going forward is to make this country some mishmash of what's left over of Moroccans and a mishmash of Central Americans. Right. And that's the only way to make the country just. Sure. And there are some people like, for example, Breitbart, one of our toughest riders, a guy named John Nolte, his wife is a Mexican immigrant. She detests and he detests that the illegal immigration. It's the, we're not anti-immigrant. We're not anti-brown people. Never have been. It's about should we, first of all, is it legitimate to have a country? Uh, had, and with, to have a country, you have to have borders. You decided a handful of countries that have brown people in them that have borders. We support that. That's fine. We would like that as well. And the next thing is protecting the American workers, which we feel like they're the ones who are the real victims here, the working class, the middle class. These people are either not getting a raise or they're not going to have a job because we're importing a cheap labor class to satisfy the Democratic donors and some Republican business owners. That is a shame. And it's Somebody's got to pick the kale and avocados, right? Somebody, that, somebody's got to watch the kids when uh, when you're off campaigning. And, <laughs> that's very funny. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 that's, and that's sadly where the debate has gone. And there's no credibility in our establishment press on issues where they have a political vested interest. If they have a political vested interest, their principle is clear. Win the day. Win this battle politically now. And if that means not telling the true story of the cartels, so be it. Because they want to get those people incentivized to come here and become Democrats and become cheap labor. It's so cynical. It's one of the darkest things happening in this country right now. Give me your less than one minute. What happens in the media? Trump gets reelected. Uh, if Trump gets reelected, then we're going to see more hatred, more vitriol, but we're also going to see some people, there will be a malaise that sets in in some ways, because I think people are already running out of tricks and they're going to get very demoralized. Some of them already are. I have a lot of friends out in Los Angeles where I grew up who are liberals and they're, they're crestfallen with the current field. So uh, hopefully this doesn't, uh, hopefully the president doesn't take his eye off the ball because he needs to do more on immigration. There's a lot more that he can do. He needs to do more in a couple other parts of his agenda. And I hope he goes for it and doesn't feel overcome confident. Does the Democrats, do the Democrats become more radical left or is there another emergence, Bill Clinton, who says we got to come back to the middle or else we're going to, we're going to lose forever? I think a lot of it depends on personality. I think it seems like they've made the calculation that a person can't lead the Democratic Party who's a moderate right now. And it's, however, Barack Obama, who was a leftist, he kind of acted like a moderate uh, when he was running in 2008. If someone like that comes along, you never know. But it's the, the right now, the people who are resonating with the media class and the blue check marks on Twitter are all hardcore socialists. Many of them are anti-American, like the squad. And probably that's going to be the leadership going forward. And the Democrats are going to have to wait for these demographics to catch up or else they're going to not win a lot of elections. Well, we haven't seen the final insult. And I'm, I'm sure it's somewhere around the bend. I got to leave it there. Alex Marlowe, thanks for coming. Uh, thanks for coming in studio.